There are a lot of different types of passes available for national parks and other federal recreation areas. It can be confusing trying to figure out which one, if any, you need, and some changes have been made for 2023 and beyond. In this episode, we'll break down the different types of passes so you can decide which one is right for you. So what we're talking about here are not just national park passes, but passes to federal lands of all stripes. They're called interagency passes, and it might be a confusing word, but it comes from the fact that several agencies manage our federal lands, including the National Park Service, the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Forest Service, Fish and Wildlife, the Army Corps of Engineers, and more. Many of these lands that are operated by the federal government have recreation fees required to access them. And because there are so many different agencies, there are different fees and there are different ways to pay them. But all of them came together years ago to develop what we now call the America the Beautiful Pass. But you might see it referred to as the interagency pass wherever you see it listed. But the America the Beautiful Pass is the pass that allows you access to all of these lands for a fee or for free if you fall under certain designations. So let's talk about all the different types of passes there are, starting with the annual pass. The annual pass is the pass that covers most people. It gets you into 2,000 plus federal recreation sites, including national parks, monuments, forests, wildlife refuges, and more. The pass costs $80, and it's good for one year from the date of purchase. It's available to Americans and non-citizens 16 years or older. Children 15 and under don't need any pass to get in. Now, not all federal lands charge a fee, so don't feel like you need to rush out and buy one for your vacation. You can usually just pick them up at the first fee charging facility you visit. But it is a good amount of them that charge, particularly a lot of the national parks. If you do want to get it in advance, you can go buy it online from store.usgs.gov. Now, it may not be worthwhile for you to buy an $80 a year pass, depending on how much you will visit. A lot of national parks charge somewhere around $30 to $35 for a week-long entry. And if that's all you're going to do over the course of the year, it probably makes sense to just do that. A lot of national parks also have their own annual pass. So maybe you pay $55 a year to be an annual pass holder at Yellowstone. If you live nearby the park and it's the only park that you're likely to visit over the course of the year, that may be the route for you. The annual pass gets you no other discounts other than the entry into federal fee charging facilities and what they call standard amenity fees. Standard amenity fees means like day use fees. So for instance, in an Army Corps of Engineers site, they may charge $5 a day for people who aren't camping there to come and visit and use the boat ramp and fish and all that sort of stuff. The pass would cover that, but it would not cover stuff like picnic shelter rentals or tours or camping. All that sort of stuff is what they call an enhanced recreation fee. And you don't get any sort of discount with the annual pass on those. You do get a discount with some other passes we'll get to in a minute. The regular annual pass provides entrance for a carload of people, up to four adults, and they have two signature slots on the back of them. So if you're a couple, you can share the pass. They often will ask you for your ID when you arrive at a gate, so it does need to match up, and you can't share it except for the other signature holder on the card. So say you're staying in Zion National Park, for instance, and you're right next to the town of Springdale, where you can walk right in and out of the campground, and your family only wants to have one National Park pass. You don't want to buy multiples. You can have separate people go in and out of the park at a time only as long as their signature is on that pass card. Now, certain folks can get an annual pass for free. Anybody that volunteers on public lands for over 250 hours a year and fourth graders as part of the Every Kid Outdoors program can apply for an annual pass as well. Now, remember I said all kids get them free if they're 15 or under. But this Every Kid Outdoors Pass will allow their whole family, their whole car load to get in free so the parents won't have to pay. It's just a way to encourage kids to get out to nature. There's lots of studies that have found that 10 year olds and kids in that age range are learning about the world and are learning about the world around them and are starting to understand the world around them in a different way. So they figured through this program they can provide access for children into national parks to help support that type of learning. If your children are homeschooled, they can also apply for the pass as well. It's good for fourth graders or any 10-year-olds if you don't track grade levels. 
In order to get the Every Kid Outdoors Pass, you have to go online to a website, which I will link to in the description, where you can print out a form and you have to print the form out and fill it out and bring it to one of these facilities to get a pass. You cannot do it when you arrive and you can't get it by mail. The next pass is the Senior Pass, and it used to be called the Golden Age Pass, no longer. It's now called the Senior Pass, but if you have the Golden Age Pass from way back when, it's still good. It's offered in two forms. You can get it annually or you can get a lifetime pass. It's for anyone 62 or over. And for all of these passes that we've talked about, except the main annual America the Beautiful pass, you do have to be American citizens now. So for the volunteer pass, for the Every Kid Outdoors pass, and now for the senior pass, and the, all the ones that I'm gonna talk about after this, you do have to be an American citizen. It's only the annual $80 America the Beautiful pass that non-citizens can get. So the senior pass is good for anyone 62 or over, and you can either pay $20 for a one-year pass, or you can pay $80 for a pass that's good for the rest of your life. If you do pay for that yearly pass and you keep it, and you buy a new one the next year, you can actually add them up to equal the lifetime pass. So if you have purchased like two annual passes and you say, hey, I'm gonna be doing this for a while, you can just go ahead and take those two passes that are already worth $40 and pay the additional $40 and you can get your lifetime senior pass. The senior pass gives you all the same benefits of the regular annual pass, including getting your whole car load in, but also a few discounts. You get half off those enhanced amenity fees, including camping. That's a huge discount, half off camping at all these different federal facilities, not just national parks, but U.S. Forest Service and Fish and Wildlife and Army Corps of Engineers, all of them. You get half off or close to half off. U.S. Forest Service is a little bit different because it doesn't fall under the Department of the Interior like the other departments. It actually falls under the Department of Agriculture, so they make a few different little decisions on their own. If you camp in a U.S. Forest Service campground that has electricity, you actually get half off the camping rate, and then you pay full price for the electricity rate. It often works out to being about a third off of camping. But the Senior Pass also gives you half off other things like tours, picnic shelter reservations, and, and boat ramp usage fees. But you can't usually get a discount on any of the amenities that are offered by a concessionaire. So not by the National Park Service or the federal government itself, but ran by a private party. That could be like a boat tour or there are several campgrounds in the National Park Service, for instance, that are operated by private concessionaires. You're not going to get a discount at most of those. Now, if you're a couple, you could just get one senior pass for the two of you because, again, it's for your whole car load, right? But there aren't two signature slots on it. There's only going to be one. You can bring your grandkids along. You can bring your children along. Whatever it might be, it's for your car load. It will give you admission. But if you're a couple and get two passes, that's going to give you both half off for things like tours. This episode is supported by Park Wolf, the ultimate app for visiting U.S. national parks. With Park Wolf, you can view upcoming places and amenities as you drive through the park, locate the nearest gas, food, bathrooms, and pullover points. Park Wolf's wildlife maps show you the best times and places to see or avoid wildlife along with a feed of the latest wildlife sighting photos from the parks. Park Wolf even makes it possible for you to view your live location and direction on official park maps while staying up to date on current NPS alerts and advisories. Park Wolf keeps working even if you lose service. To learn more, download the Park Wolf app for iPhone free from the Apple App Store today. Now, the third pass I want to talk about is the Access Pass. The Access Pass is for anybody living with a disability, and it's good for anybody with any disability that's life-altering at any level. So you have to be permanently disabled, but it does not have to be 100% disability. It can be at any level, and the bar for this isn't the same as, for instance, disabled parking placards. It doesn't have to be a mobility disability. It can be a learning disability. It can be all sorts of physical or mental disabilities. It just has to be permanent and life-altering. In fact, you can't use one of those parking placards as your proof for getting one. The Access Pass is free, it's lifetime, and it provides the exact same benefits as the Senior Pass. So free admission to facilities plus 
half off camping and half off tours and all that good stuff. In order to get the access pass, you're supposed to provide documentation either from a doctor or a federal agency showing that you have a disability. So a note from your doctor that says you have a permanent disability and what that disability is will sacrifice. Actually, it doesn't need to say what that disability is. It just needs to say that it's a permanent disability. A social security award letter showing that you have a disability will suffice. A, a disabled VA designation will suffice. That's all if you're going to get it by mail. Now in person, usually they just have you sign a form testifying that you have a disability, but I'd bring in that documentation along with you just in case. The next pass is where there's some new stuff, the military pass. The military pass used to be annual only, and it used to be only for active duty military and their families. That pass still exists and anyone in the military can get it. Now, two years ago, the government decided to extend the military pass to veterans and Gold Star families, those that have lost a loved one in service. But you had to get it renewed every year. There is now, just as of a few days ago, a lifetime military pass that veterans and Gold Star families can pick up. So you don't have to get it renewed every year. Veterans can get it with a federal ID, for instance, your VA card, or if you have a different federal ID that shows you're a veteran or a state ID, like your driver's license, if it has a veteran's designation on it, you can just show that at a national park or other federal fee charging facility. If you don't have anything that proves you are a veteran, you can contact the VA for a veteran ID card, whether you use VA services or not. It's good for other veteran discounts that are out there as well. Both military passes offer entrance only and no other discount. Now, how do you get all these passes? Well, the easiest way is to go to store.usgs.gov. You will pay a $10 service fee in order to get them. So even though the passes like the access pass and the military pass are free, you will pay a $10 service fee to get them and you'll pay an additional $10 on top of the $80 if you're buying the annual pass or the senior pass just for buying them online. And if you're going to buy them online, check if they show on their website, usually what their backup is. Sometimes it can be 10 to 12 weeks before you get one. Sometimes it's only a few days, but you want to make sure you know if you've got a trip coming up. Now, the other way you can get any of these passes is by visiting one of these federal fee charging facilities. If it has a cash register, they probably sell the pass. There are some 422 national park sites in the country, and only about one third of them actually charge a fee. So make sure the place you're going to actually charges a fee before you go out and buy one of these passes as well. But if you do buy it in person, 80% of the money that you spent on the pass stays within that park. So if you want to support a certain park, you can buy the pass there. If you do buy it in the park, it does take a little bit longer. So that's something to consider if it's a place that's got like a long entrance line, like Yellowstone or Grand Canyon National Park, and you don't want to wait in line longer it might be worth it to pick it up in advance. Another benefit of purchasing in advance is that you can use that senior card or that access card to then reserve campgrounds on recreation.gov and you can enter your pass number right then and there and you get your half off when you reserve your campsite. If you don't do that, you can pay full price and then call up recreation.gov and they'll give you a refund on the half that you paid. If you lose any of these passes, you do have to replace them. There is no way for them to find you in the system and then give you a replacement pass. If your pass is damaged, they will give you a replacement pass. But if you lose your senior pass, for instance, that's your lifetime $80 pass. You have to pay $80 again. If you lose your access pass, you'll have to show your proof of disability again. There's no way around any of that. Now, a lot of the places you go to with these passes, they'll want you to display them in the window of your vehicle because there might not be an entrance station and you can pick up a free hang tag at any of these facilities to hang it from your rear view mirror. If you're driving a vehicle like a motorcycle where you can't hang a hang tag, you can actually pick up a free sticker. The sticker is only good for a year, even if you have a lifetime pass, but you can get a sticker that you can put on your vehicle. Let's say you have a open top Jeep or something like that. and You don't have an easy way to put your pass somewhere. If you forget to bring your pass with you, you will have to pay to enter. They have no way of looking you up again. If you haven't bought a pass in advance and you're going on vacation and you know that you're going to get the military or the access pass, for instance, make sure to bring the documentation you need with you. If you're going to enter a park on a bicycle, the pass will cover the pass holder and up to three more adults. If you're going to enter on a motorcycle, it's only gonna cover the people on the motorcycle because that's considered a vehicle. 
If you're walking into a park, it's going to cover the pass holder and up to three adults, just like it would if you were riding a bike. If you buy the senior pass online, they do do a quick verification of your age using your social security number. So if you don't want to do that, you'll want to purchase in person. I also wanna let you know that there are some places where you technically aren't charged admission, but you have to pay for parking and the pass doesn't do anything for you. Like Mount Rushmore, you have to pay for the parking garage. I suppose you could hike in or get dropped off for free, but parking is not free. In the Great Smoky Mountains, park admission is free, but starting next year, you will have to buy a parking hang tag if you wanna stop anywhere in the park. There may be a few other instances like that. So that's my overview of all the different park passes for national parks and other federal lands for the year 2023. Now these aren't gonna get you into any other parks that are ran by any other forms of government like state parks or county parks. So make sure that you're considering that as well. If you found value from this video, I really appreciate it. If you click that like button, it does help show it to other people. And if you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell that pops up after so you can get notified every time that we put a video out. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time on the next episode.